Yeah, what up? He was muted, so you couldn't hear him talking about nothing. What up? I'm Kret. Welcome to Magic Rising. Uh, it is Wednesday. We have a new member of the cast, uh, Irina. So, welcome. And um, let's just catch up from what happened last session. So, let's let's have a little bit of a recap. What happened? I don't remember, to be honest. Do you want me to fill in the part I remember? Do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, was last episode the time? No, the, um, Jacob Dane, our resident mentalist and psychic, had been kidnapped, if I remember correctly. That's correct. I don't yeah. remember if that was the, of the beginning of that episode or the one before. It was. Uh, it was halfway through. About. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we were looking for a new. We we're looking for a new lead. Jacob detected something. We sort of used them as a compass. Someone showed up out of nowhere, stabbed him, and teleported away with him. Mm -hmm. We ran back to Julian. Did we meet Julian last episode? Yeah, yeah, we did. All right, so we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the action was we went back to a guy. He told us where to find him. We fought with two guys. One of them had some sort of mental power. The other one had some knives, and she could, um, she could teleport around mm -hmm. and like make people lose their powers. And at the end of this, at the end of everything, I nuked an entire tunnel full of fire, and they had disappeared again. Right. Except that we had an arm left behind, and we with a bracelet, bracelet, and so we're going from there. Things that we discovered in last episode. Um, there is, there are three orders, uh, big order orders. Mm -hmm. The, the was what are they called? Order of Magi's, which are led by Julian. A guy that pulled us out of a big fight because we were about to get our asses kicked, presumably. Sure. He gave us a lot of information. Uh, told us, basically told us as well that Jason Tabernacle, the guy that got us together, is more powerful than he looks and he knows more than he's letting on. There are the Coyotes, am I saying that right? Chaos. Chaos, okay. They're basically Chaos Disciples, so to speak. They're about getting power by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. They're, they're an alternative sort of school. The Order of Magis are sort of about keeping power in check and sort of keeping everything safe and secure and not blowing up anything and getting too much attention on them. And then we have the third the, the, the third element, the new guys, which are the Order of Reed. They're the ones behind whatever is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And the, mo the source of their power is Mortimer Reed, this... Um, I, I don't we don't know much about more than Marie, but it's it's, it's so equivalent to Jason in a way sort of right mm -hmm. right and Jason thinks whatever whatever he's doing is wrong and needs to be stopped that's how bad it is uh, we also know that unlike like the other the other orders are like order of magi's and the coyotes are sort of like schools in a way you get inducted into it and you grow in it and etc whereas the the order of Reed they just suddenly show up there you go there's a new guy is mm -hmm. powerful and yeah we after everything we grabbed the arm because we had nowhere else to go and i'm a psychopath so i grabbed the arm with a bracelet it has some sort of power bracelet we went back to julian's place and we went to sleep after that because we were all nearly dead yeah so um julian just sort of like He would have sighed and, like, grimaced if he ever showed any emotion. So you could tell yeah. that, like, he gave you the same blank look he always does, but it was, like, an uh, an annoyed and unpleasant blank look. Um, and he just sort of says, yeah, I can... He says he can work on um, the arm and do something, but just sort of sends you off and, you know, says, I'll, I'll contact you when it's ready. Um... So you guys go your separate ways, I assume. Um, yeah, last time, if I remember correctly, Julian offered us rooms to sleep in the mansion or whatever for the night. Yeah, I mean, he he offered you the the like to sleep over, but he he's not finished uh, whatever he's doing the next day. So he just sort of okay. you know sends you off to go to whatever it is you people do. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, that's sort of where we left off, right? Um, so anything else that happened last session or between sessions that you guys just want to mention? 
Proxy, I remember you saying you figured something out. Yeah, but that's going to be part of the character. Like, my character... I figured something out right after it happened, but we were closing the session. Yeah. Okay. So my character is going to figure it out, like, overnight, so to speak. Like, they rested. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, I mean, I guess the next step would be I that think. you guys are going to meet up at the nightclub whenever that is. All right. Um, I have to ask, how does Irina get in? Like... She has to show up at some point, right? I'm, I know. I'm aware. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Let the, You're the boss. do his work. Come on. Let me. Let me. Let me work my magic. Um, all right. You all guys right, spend enough right. time doing that. Okay. So. Kurt wasn't born yesterday. He was born two days ago. Come mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So yeah. I mean, if if you guys have anything else, speak now or forever hold your peace, and we'll move on. No, I guess we can start. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So. Everyone's gonna meet up at the nightclub, Le Baron, NYC. I don't know what this is doing here. The line? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, um, yeah. So you guys meet up at the nightclub. Uh, I guess just regrouping and um, at the usual table. Yeah. Uh, Jason is gonna show up. And he is going to have uh, Irina's character with him. So, what does Illyria look like? Um, she is about five foot two. She is very tiny, very short. Um, she is. Uh, she has a sort of um, black hair, but with uh, you know, sort of very stylish white streaks through it. Um, there's nothing really that exceptional about her, like, nothing really. She is, she could blend into a crowd very easily, she, she looks very plain, and yeah, that, that's pretty much her. Alright, so Jason just sort of sits down at his table, um, orders some drinks, uh, which he shares with everyone, and, um, I guess he just sort way, of... Go ahead. Saying my character is sort of visibly upset about something. Mm -hmm. You can keep going wherever you're going. Just sort of... That's something like my character is like... Like fucking chewing on something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Go on. So, um... Jason just sort of like sits down leans forward. His, um... He looks like even more disheveled than usual, which is saying a lot. Like, his shirt is just buttoned wrong. Like... You know where you get the buttons like slightly yeah. off and it's just like that? It looks great, but it's like it's wrong. That's not how you do that. He just sort of leaned forwards and uh, says, Well, uh, I heard what happened to Jacob. Sort of like looks at his fingertips and he's like, That's a real shame. But I met someone that you might want to uh, become acquainted with. This is Illyria. Illyria, Edward Fang Dio Albatross. Edward Fang Dio Albatross, Illyria. And he just sort of like does these sort of overly dramatic introductions, like completely beyond what's necessary. Like, not, not sort of flamboyant, but just like, yeah. like trying to make sure that everyone's introduced and says, so now that we've all met, Dio, what's on your mind? When were you gonna tell us that we might end up brainwashed? What? What? The guys we met. We missed it. Right? Sophia? Daniel? The guys we met in the sewer. It's a... was a woman, a good fighter that could nullify magic, and a psychic. Was it random? Was this an accident? You gonna tell me that wasn't Sophia and Daniel. The guys that were kidnapped. Jason just leans back and starts giggling, and he says, "Coincidences are my thing, not, not Mortimer's." Uh, interesting. So they were them. I don't know. Which means that, yeah, I'm such a good friend. I even forgot his name. Sorry. Right, Jacob. <laughs> Which means that Jacob could be not killed, but brainwashed at least. He could be gone. 
I'm I'm acting in character because obviously yeah, yeah, Jacob yeah. is not character. Yeah. Um, Jason just sort of like is sort of like playing with his lip, and he's like, hmm. I think you might be onto something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're exactly right. I, I don't know. I think you might be onto something. Great. So these people get the powers from items like the bracelet, right? So yeah. what if they're not the? It's not them being brainwashed. Their powers are being taken and given to others. That's possible. Is such a thing even possible? Jason just sort of shrugs. She's like, oh. Have you ever heard of anything like that? I've heard of a lot of things. Like this? It's possible. Like power stealing away? Possible. More to I mean, it makes powers now. being stolen, but I have not heard of them being transferred. So that would be something new to me. So Jason, where do we go from here? Do you have any idea? What do we do with the bracelet, with the arm, where we meet these fuckers? I, I, have, I have some payback to deliver, man. <laughs> Alright, so, over the table, um, your new project was to learn more about Mortimer Reed and Jason Tabernacle, correct? Yeah. So that's sort of where we're going to uh, try and... Alright, that's where you guys are going to try and look to go from here. Um... So, yeah, Jason just sort of looks at you and says, I don't know. Maybe you'll get lucky and find a new lead. Uh, at this point, my character just starts laughing, like, uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you don't know? Well, I fucking don't know. Does that, do any of you know? Hmm. I think you're, uh, you're, uh, like, familiar enough with the god complex so that you know that he's not going to reveal anything. He's the puppet master. That's the feel I'm getting. Uh, Jason just sort of, like, leans back and he's like, I'm trying to be helpful here. What what, could, what can I do to help? Have you managed to find anything from the bracelet? Anything that can help us track these guys down? Um. Obviously, I'm not going to tell him that I'm looking into him, right? No, he just sort of, like, scratches his chin a little bit, and then, like, pulls, like, out of his bra uh, back pocket the bracelet and just sort of, like, I guess tosses it at Albatross. It lands like right in your hand though. Like like yeah. you didn't even catch it, it just sort of goes and it's just like in your hand. It like falls on my wrist, yeah. Um and he says Well it's it's depowered now, but this bracelet did have uh did grant someone the ability to teleport. It seems like a lot of magical hardware. Does anyone know anybody in the underworld that would sell something like this? Or make something like this? No, I'm scared to talk to people, so I, I don't know anyone in the underground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know the guy that delivers the groceries and that's it. <laughs> yeah. They bring me food, they're pretty nice. Jason just sort of scratches his chin again and says, I actually, I think I know someone that can help you. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, let's go meet him, uh, my friend. And he just sort of, like, gets up from the table, like, very suddenly. Uh, and he starts walking... I guess you're like on like the second floor of the nightclub. He just starts walking down the stairs towards the back. 
And oh, as he's walking, he's talking. Uh, yeah, no, a, a friend of mine, Henry Barnes. Um, he uh, he does some work with magical devices. What's his wow. name, sir? Henry Barnes. Okay. Well, my character sort of holds back on information because she sees that the this group she's just met uh, sort of. Uh, have trust issues with each other, so she she is she's silently observing and taking in everything, and she knows she ha she might have some information to help them with the bracelet, but since that doesn't really tie into her purpose, she sort of holds back until we see if uh, Jason's contact has any information to offer about this, and if they don't, then she'll give up the information. So Jason sort of like walks down to the back door of the nightclub, which it kind of like blends into the wall. The nightclub has this very like red, um, like everything, everything's just sort of like this dark shade of red. And red in the back, there. there's like a door that sort of looks like it's just like a part of the wall or like, like some sort of thing, but it's definitely a door. And he just sort of walks up to it and turns around and he says... Uh, and he, like, looks at everyone, and he's like, uh, we don't have time for any of you to change, and just sort of opens the door and walks out into the street. Okay. Um. So it's, it's presently, like, late spring where you guys are. Uh, so I'd assume you guys are all dressed, like, not particularly for war or for cold weather. No. Um, but as, as Jason walks out into the street, like, there's this, like, just gust of cold air that comes into the nightclub. And he just sort of goes out into the street. Where are you taking his Jason? Sort of just muttering to myself, not really saying anything. Mm. Where are you fucking taking his Jason? Sort of follow him, I guess. Yeah, yeah we all, I follow as well. All right, you guys. Quite surprised too, but. Walk out into the street, and uh, it's cold. It's very busy. The street is full of people walking and talking to each other in French. Um, the the street signs are in yeah, French, French. <laughs> because you're. Very clearly in France. In France. <laughs> um, Come on, it's Montreal. <laughs> could be Montreal. Um, Nobody insulted you yet, so it's not Montreal. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, probably. it's cold. Like you sort of walk out in the street and stop moving, and the cold just like very rapidly infects your entire body, and you just like you feel like you have to keep moving. Um, the people Only walking down the street are just drinking and talking to each other and having a good time. You can hear, like, the almost, not really quiet, but, like, muffled bass line of, like, a party in one of the buildings somewhere just echoing out into the street. If only we had some people that could make fire. I know, that would be, that'd be really convenient. Oh, I'm excited we're in France. That's good food. <laughs> Start, please. So you just sort of like see Jason like way far down the street, just like turn a corner, and you lose track of him. Well, great. That's that's our vacation done. Now what? So you're in France. What do you yeah. do? Probably set fire to friends, but otherwise... <laughs> Maybe throw a rock at someone. Right, DM? <laughs> yeah, that'll help. Is there, is there anybody around us that are like in an... Oh, no, yeah, the street is bustling. It's full of people. Is vanishing a thing you've seen Jason do often? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, kind of, all the time. He kind of says something totally and then you know he's gone. It's like Batman. Well, that... <laughs> well, that rules out a magic passage, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't kidnapped. He's just an <laughs> asshole. I know. <laughs> he wasn't so... kidnapped, he's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to find Henry Barnes. 
Yeah. Excuse me, are you Henry Barnes? Sort of the best thing people just sort of uh, There's <laughs> You're like talking to like a group of women, they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not those. But they, they like they like beckon to you to like come with them. Ooh. I mean no, I right? think Albatross is down for that. Alright. Um so you follow like... the, the group of drunken women. <laughs> Oh, now now anyone... I don't know how we cross it down. I'm sorry. If they're drunk. Anyone has any better ideas? Otherwise, we're following the drunk women because... Nah, no. <laughs> uh, did he even mention what city we're in? Or does anyone have any idea? Um, my character just sort of looks around for clues. Um, sort of like does her own thing, thing walks around the group... Um, and she sees uh, in the distance, sort of, the Arc de Triomphe, and she's like, okay, we are very clearly in a sort of isolated part of Paris, or not really isolated, but quiet enough so mm -hmm. that it's not infest uh, like infested by the bustle of the more central part. And uh, she thinks to herself about uh, magic districts, and since this was sort of a very special, um, sort of very special artifact, she thinks about the more shady parts of the magic district, and uh, she says, "Well, I have absolutely no idea where we are, but we can surely ask someone which part of Paris we are, and I could lead you to uh, to where we possibly might have to be." Um, okay, so um, let me get this straight. You figure. Again, my character is an asshole. Sorry, I mean character. Mm -hmm. You figured that um, we're in France and that we're lost. I figured something like that out. Do you know why? And just sort of pointing around at the signs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, See, the, the reason I want to ask people and not just look at the signs is because I'm not acquainted with Paris. So, I, I do like not know. Every day. <laughs> oh, you do? Well, then. Be so kind as to tell us. All right, all right. Well, what do you have in mind? We're not following the drunk ladies, then. <laughs> I, I just want to know. Not. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can all find right. out anything about Henry Barnes or where we can find him, go ahead. Um, I sort of... The only thing I would need to know is whether we are in western, like eastern, northern, southern, or central part of Paris. Um, and I go around and I ask people. Alright, so and... you're asking people and they're just like, the only response is, well, do you speak French? Uh, oui, un peu. Shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cret, did you explain to her how the system works with the will and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but, so, like, I assume you're not spending will or trying to, like, really put a lot of effort into this let me know if you are but yeah you just sort of go around and asking people and the responses you get are like incoherent party responses right they're like yeah paris best city in the world woo turn up but in french <laughs> whatever the french equivalent of that would be um all right so we take the longer way which is we take the you are not getting me out you are not stopping me from succeeding in this you understand yeah. me? We are taking the Arc de Triomphe as a landmark. Okay. Everyone knows sort of around where in Paris the Arc de Triomphe is. We will go there, which is the sort of roundabout way to do this. Mm -hmm. We will head there. And from there, we will head to the shady part of Magic Town of Paris that I know. And we will investigate there. And if it results in nothing, please don't punch me. All right, so you're gonna start heading in that direction. Um, all right. All right, so I guess you start moving in that direction. It's the streets are kind of like jammed, n not really jammed full of people, but there's enough traffic on the sidewalks and in the street that it's sort of hard to hard to move quickly. Um, but you know, you you start making your way. Uh, towards the center of the city and after maybe 20 minutes of walking 
you know, like quite a few blocks, you realize that everyone around you is speaking German. What was his name again? The guy? Henry Barnes. Which one? Henry. Henry Barnes. A typical German or French name. I know, right? <laughs> it's definitely but, very German. Have you figured out where we are yet? Because I'm I I have a faster way of finding out where we are right now. All right then. Don't throw a rock at me. Please. <laughs> I, I think are you, we should are you pull out our phones burning the whole underground? and check the GPS. Oh, no. I wouldn't yeah. think. I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, I'm going to grab a random person, a mm -hmm. random passerby. Sure. And use my intimidation factor. Okay. Sort of like, sort of casually like, Hi, I'm pissed. Where the fuck are we? And just sort of like light my hand on fire. Do you speak German? <laughs> Nobody's going to learn English. I could translate for you. <laughs> Does anyone in the party speak German? Uh, Do you speak German? I, I don't know. Albatross is too shy to learn a new language. <laughs> this is this is the great thing about American characters is they only speak English. <laughs> Ich bin ein Schlanger. That's all the German I know. Um, I think it, it means I am a snake. Honestly, Dio would probably just be yelling at him in English. Exactly, like. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> All right, so you're yelling at this guy in English. Are you spending any will, or are you just using your intimidation? To find out where we are. I think I'm just using my normal intimidation. Okay. So you're just using your normal intimidation. Are that guy's just like Berlin, of course. And then he Sorry? just like wanders off. Berlin, of course. And then he just wanders off. So we were... Is this a puzzle? Are we supposed to be figuring out something? It appears we have found a magic place that can travel us across the world, street by street. The party is still raging. Well then, I mean, is that really a bad thing that we're in Berlin now then? Should we go and check out the party? That seems to be a constant. <laughs> yeah, the party. That sounds like a good idea to me. There's probably women at the party, so... As you guys are just sort of, like, standing around talking, the cold is, like, really becoming almost heavy. Like, it's weighing you down with how cold it is. You cannot stop yourself from shivering. Alright, guys, let's crash a party. Only we follow those girls earlier. I promise you there will be girls there. No, but we wouldn't be in... Berlin. We could be in France. We could have gotten the amazing French food, some pastries. That'd be great. We can get some sauerkraut. Okay, let's let's go. Um, we can get you McDonald's if you want. Yeah. So are you? No, no. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Like, how are you gonna find a party to crash? I okay. mean, aside from the fact that people are partying in the street. <laughs> let, let, let's stop and think for a second. Not too long because we're fucking freezing here. Mm -hmm. But, um, Illyria, did I say that right? Yes. Uh, you can track people, right? I'm assuming Jason introduced us properly with like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah okay. you, you basically know her stuff. Yes. I think it's time for you to track down this Henry Barnes. I mean, yeah, do whatever you have to to find this Henry Barnes because we're running around in circles. Well, I have basically no information about him. I only know his name. I cannot ask anyone because he suddenly switched to German. Just uh, we use will, that's how this works. Hmm? Just use enough will, that's how this works. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't actually have to come up with a strategy? Aww. No, right. I mean, but if you run out of will, I mean... Sort of. You have to come up with something plausible. I can't, for example, use enough will to convert my pyromania into the ability to find where he is. I guess I could burn, burn down the entire city house by house until I find him, but that may be a little bit of a stretch. I don't think he... Um, yeah, Alright, I shall spend three will. Uh, you can on only spend in one, two, and four. You have two tracking. I think two would be enough, no? Probably. Two. Two. Probably, Gret says. Sounds like a bait to me. Yep. Don't trust me. 
probably. It's like, oh, you learned guys. that you're in the wrong city. Get fucked, nerd. <laughs> and that's what's gonna happen. Right. Oh yeah, he's he's back. He's back in New York. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, I bet he's like warming his feet at his fireplace in some luxurious apartment. Hey, maybe he's back in Canada. We should we should check Canada. I heard it's a really cool place mm-hmm. on the internet. It has bags of milk. We're not going to Canada. <laughs> yes, what? That go, that is true. We don't go east. We go west. Fuck Toronto. Okay, fuck Toronto. I'll take Friends? you to the nice places. Did it work? All right. So, uh, did she track her? Or credit? How many how many points of oil did you spend? I spent two. All right. On... Although I should have probably have my own will and spend four, but I spent two. All right, so that is a four-point spend, which means you're going to do something effective, something that moves you closer to your goals. So, um, yeah, you just sort of, like, look around, and you're like, okay, what do I know about Henry? And you don't really know anything about Henry, but... You're like, okay, well, Jason knows about Henry, so maybe I can find Jason. And um, you start to, as you're sort of like, just sort of, I guess you just close your eyes and like listen to what's happening around you. You overhear the conversation with a group of people that are talking about a uh, a party and they, they mention uh, Jason. And they're walking, like, south through an alley. Um, I just, I just silently say, follow me. Calm down and follow me. And I follow those people into the south alley. Um, I'm not much, I'm not one that much for explanations. So you'll just have to do it for now. Okay. And trust me. Explanations are overrated. Let's go. So, um... Is he just as you start to, this as you start to move, you you warm up a little bit. Um, the cold is not as imposing, um, and you're you're following this group of drunken people who are on the way to Jason's house. And as you're following them, you're sort of pulled into the atmosphere. Uh, you're to whatever extent Dio can having lively <laughs> conversation. Uh, enjoying yourself, um, you know. There, there's someone who's just like, who like as you walk by, effective. you like grab like a pitcher of beer from some guy, and he's like, "Hey!" And <laughs> uh, you consider pouring yourself a drink. Um, and uh, huh? as you follow these people, and you just sort of lose track of time, but you sort of regain your senses as as they arrive at a uh the door to a small club called the miami rose and um they uh they enter the line to get in where the bouncer is a large uh tan-skinned man who is just gleefully letting people into the party he doesn't seem like he's a very good bouncer he's just basically letting everyone in (laughs) And he's very happy about it. All right. That was my kind of guy. All right. My so you, you senses are tingling. Uh, you wait in line. Um, you realize that everyone is speaking English. And convenient. Yeah. Convenient pool. So now, you said Miami Rose. And uh, it's still cold though. But you, uh, you enter the um, the club, the nightclub, and uh, it's very loud. Like you're immediately assaulted by waves of bass. Like, like the air thickens with each each beat of the bass and just washes over you. Like you're being hit by 
almost like getting hit by a splash of water from a car driving by. Like, the air is so thick that it assaults you and your ears with the bass and shakes your body down to the core. And uh, up at the front, you see uh, Jason is DJing this party. Of course he is. Well, why wouldn't he be DJing this party? Good question. What a guy. What a guy. Mm. All right. He's the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Except he's the most interesting man in the world with magic, which just makes it even better or worse, depending. He's a very passionate guy. Yeah, there he is. So, uh, my character. And, and talking... everything that you're saying is like shouting, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can't hear anything. There he is! <laughs> and I sort of just start ca- walking. To him, not like pushing, not necessarily like pushing people away, but sort of actually going through the crowd. Because you're in a party, I'm going to impose a penalty. You have to spend one on. will to say anything to anyone else without going, There he is! What? And then moving close to their ear and like yelling into their ear because it's that loud. <laughs> All right. But I don't think my character would care if they hear or not. <laughs> no, he really so, wouldn't. It's just sort of a, There he is! And I'm gone. There you go. <laughs> so I'm cutting to the crowd to get to Jason. I don't know if anything's gonna happen in the meantime. I don't know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're able to jostle your way to the front, shove your way to the front. Really, <laughs> Dio probably would put any effort into not hitting people. Um, not exceptionally. <laughs> yeah. So you get up to the front, and Jason is like doing his thing. He's like holding his headphones and, like, twisting a knob. And, uh, he looks at you and meets your eye and just says, I don't do requests! (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna pull a napkin from a nearby guy, or nearby table, whatever, like, fuck it, I don't even care if they're looking. Yeah. Pull Pull out a pen and write, Henry Barnes, where? And then just sort of look at him with, like, a... Um, Jason just sort of, like, looks at you, and he's like, you're right. And, uh, and you can hear him, by the way, like, fine. And he, he's not using mic or anything, but you could just hear him fine. And he, um, he just sort of, like, grabs someone out of the crowd and, like, just lifts them up by their shoulder and plops <laughs> them down at the DJ booth, puts the headphones on them, and they're just, like, they're like, all right. And they, like, twist the knob, knob and bounce their head. And he just sort of, like, um... Uh, he just sort of... Like, walks out the... Um... Back of the nightclub with you. Or, like, leads you out the back of the nightclub. And, uh, you exit out onto a street. It's much warmer again. Um, and... The uh, street is well lit and uh, pretty clean, but yeah, it's very warm outside. Is that still very loud? Uh, no. When the door closes, like it's it's very muffled again. Thank fuck. (laughs) All right. So before any conversation begins, I um, I basically. Do not want to find myself. My character does not want to find herself and this group wandering through different cities of the world again. So she. Uh... That's part of the fun. <laughs> I, mean, I always wanted to travel. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Go on, go on, so, go on. And she did overhear the first conversation you ever had. She did, well, she didn't really overhear, but by observing, she could tell that these people, like, the group wasn't really they were skeptical about Jason like they needed him they're both sort of codependent the group and Jason and sort of from that she reached a conclusion that um well I don't know Jason sort of not really needs to be kept tabs on but she thinks it would be easier if uh, she um sort of like she used the part of her magic to make like sort of this flea-sized 
thing that I know that Jason could probably be omniscient and he probably senses that this is happening, but she basically plants a bug on him. It won't last long. It's not anything too OP. It'll probably last like a few hours, mm -hmm. but just so they reach Henry Barnes effectively. And so that doesn't happen again. She plants this on Jason in hopes that he's not omniscient or anything. Okay. Do you have any sort of perception skill or like anything like that? Uh, what do you mean? Like, is, is your character good at noticing things? Um... Is anyone's character I mean, good at noticing things? Uh, technically yours is. I possess item senses, says, says on the sheet. Alright, so it's when you do this, you just notice uh, Jason's ears twitch a little bit. Alright, so I know he's on to me. I am not going to admit anything, just in case he goes with it. Yeah. I am going to play it cool. And never admit anything. <laughs> never, um, unless he calls me out on it. In which case, uh, I'll play it cool again. Well, I will explain my intentions, but I'm doing it sneakily for now, just in case we can get some information on Jason. Alright, so, so Jason, I guess, just sort of like... Uh, hails a cab um, and like starts having a, a overly friendly conversation with the cab driver which is kind of strange because Jason just met this guy and um, you notice that the cab driver is speaking with an Australian accent um, and uh, eventually the, the driver gets out of his cab and like walks away and Jason hops in the front seat and just like motions for everyone to get in. Okay, All right, you have to ride along. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Uber driver. Yeah, we need, Uber we driver. need to call the other guy. What's Elijah? We need to call uh, Elijah. I mean, friend. you He'll can try. He'll come to Australia to get us. Right? <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> get in the car. <laughs> you you just like look at Uber and it's like, why the fuck are you in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're outside. You're outside um, a, a nightclub called Miami Rose, by the way. Okay. And All and right. like you just see that behind you, and then like you hop in the cab. I I mean I guess you hop in the cab. Do you guys hop in the cab? I hop yes, in the cab. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Um, I don't know, it seems kind of crowded. And so yeah, Jason just sort of like floors it, and like your car was like stationary and then like it's like 90. <laughs> I guess his magic also applies to mechanical things because why not? <laughs> uh well I mean like it didn't like actually accelerate instantly but it like accelerated like as perfectly as you can get a cab. Okay. Like it's like it's manual for some reason. Yeah. I don't you're kind of wondering like I don't even know they made manual taxis, but it's manual and Jason is like He's just, like, driving it perfectly. Um, I, I'm sorry, completely aside, I'm so confused by that, because in Portugal, where I, where I lived in here in, in Norway, like, yeah. automatic cars are so rare, everything is manual. So when you say something like that, I'm like, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, anyway, well, he's shifting perfectly. Like, yeah, like, yeah, go on. like he's been, uh, you know, racing all his life or something like that. Um, but, yeah, he, he pulls to a stop outside... Um, outside an apartment building and like parallel parks, but it's it's like one of those parallel parking jobs where it's like, poof, poof, like he didn't even try <laughs> and it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, you he hops out and um, just sort of like walks up to the building and just sort of like rings the uh, or hits the uh, hits the buzzer and it just goes Bark! and like. Um, you hear a voice like, who is it? And then they exchange some words and the, you know, there's like the beep that lets people in and the door opens. All right. I move to follow Jason. Not that I'm not sick of follow the leader, but go on. <laughs> All right. You enter. Um, inside is a building. Or inside is like it's just an apartment building. You go up and there's a door to a room. Jason enters. The walls are made of metal. Um, 
and just covered with workbenches. Like, the entire apartment is nothing but workbenches, tools, gizmos, and, like, stools. And in there is a short man of about five foot one um, who is, like, leaning over a table with, like, an overly sized screwdriver screwing something and um he hears jason come in and greets him uh jason introduces this man as henry barnes sorry mr henry we literally walked all over the globe for you i think can you tell us what this is yeah can you tell us what this is and i motion to albatross to throw in whatever the hell the yeah um henry promptly drops it it breaks he looks down and says and then looks up and says no i don't think so that's gonna be our break we'll be back in about five minutes and i'm gonna continue trolling everybody do you realize how close my character is just setting literally everything on fire (laughs) yes yes i I, I think to you at this point